Hi guys, I posted a video a little earlier and that video related to some new products that Hobby Lobby has, at least on their website it shows them as being new. I had never seen them in the store and so I went to my Hobby Lobby and I found these rolls of cork fabric. They're 15 by 18 inches long and they were hanging in the aisle where they have their scissors hanging. Now I found that this fabric is super, super thin, and so I wasn't all that impressed. Well, a subscriber posted that she had the fabric too, and that she might try to put a layer of heat and bond between two layers of this. So that's what I'm going to try to see if that solves the issue. Now I've already put heat and bond on the zebra print, and it does seem like it's gonna work really nicely. I have two layers of the blue and one little sheet of the heat and bond. If you've never used heat and bond, it comes in a plastic cover like this. Now this is the ultra hold. They have different holds, but I use the ultra hold. The heat and bond has two sides. They have a shinier side and it's actually textured. You can feel that this is the adhesive on this side of the sheet. The other side is just a piece of paper, and that's the backing to the adhesive. So if you use this, the first thing you'll do, once you have your fabric cut to size, cut your heat and bond just a tiny bit smaller. and then iron it on. Now I have an easy press set at 280 degrees and I'm just going to put it on for a few seconds. Just long enough so that the heat and bond will actually adhere a little bit to the fabric. Now the next step will be to peel the backing off of the heat and bond and then to put the next piece of fabric on top of it. But you need to let your heat and bond cool down before you can pull your backing off. Okay, I only waited a few minutes and then I lifted the corner to see if it would come off and it does. Now you just put your other layer on top of it. This time I'm going to press it for eight seconds. And that's all you do. Now I would not use this in your Maker or your other Cricut or Silhouette product until this cools down. You wouldn't want that glue to be a little bit tacky and get on your blade, but this one is cooled down. So I'll go ahead and move on and start with it. I have my earrings designed and I have my cork on my mat. Now I'm gonna do a test cut. I'm selecting faux leather paper thin because that is the setting that I use even when I'm using the thicker cork. On the design I'm using, I won't be cutting down here so my little test cut is going to go right there. Okay, that's not exactly where I planned it to be, but it cut beautifully. So that just barely didn't cut through somewhere in the corner over there. There we go. But as far as the thickness and what they look like from the side, that is perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Then we'll go ahead and pull this one up. 
Again, I had to do just a little bit of surgery to release those, but look at the side. That looks really nice. You just don't even notice that that's two layers. And they match up perfectly because we put the heat and bond on before we cut them. Sometimes I've seen crafters cut a front and a back of an earring and then they glue them together with E6000 or something like that. And having the heat and bond on before cutting them just makes them look flawless. So kudos, kudos, kudos to the subscriber that suggested this. It was the perfect fix. I'm going to go ahead and put these earrings together. Then I'll show you a picture of them at the end. I want you to really see the details of these earrings. So I'm going to put this really close to the camera. Look at how flawless they look from the side. Look how perfect they look. You can't even really tell that's two layers.